So today we want to take a look at related rate problems. So similar to optimization and other story problems, right? They're all different, all different contexts. So there isn't really one way to solve all of them, but they all have a general sort of structure that we can use to approach solving these types of problems. So related rates, remember a rate means that we've got a, a change with respect to time. So we've got the derivative of some quantity, who knows, dt. Yeah. Now, what related rates is going to end up using are the skills of implicit differentiation and the chain rule. So let's just remember what's going on with chain rule in that sense. If I want to take dy dx, then I can take dy du, but then I need to multiply by the derivative of u with respect to x. So in our related rate sort of context, since we're looking at a rate, we're going to want to take the derivative with respect to time, but I'm going to be looking at, say, like the radius of a sphere or the side of a triangle or something like that, and that's not necessarily going to have a t variable. So let's say I had something like r squared. But I need to take the derivative of r squared with respect to t. Well, I'm going to use the chain rule. I'm going to say, OK, take the derivative of r squared with respect to r, 2r. That's uh, the derivative of r squared with respect to r. But then I need to multiply by dr dt. Right? So 2r dr dt is my derivative of r squared with respect to t. Now, in order to actually calculate the value of what that actually is, I'm going to need both r and dr dt. Right? I'm, those are two things that I don't know that I'm going to need to put in there. OK. So that's how we're using the chain rule and implicit differentiation to get at these rates. Now, the rates are related, right? They're not very creative in their name. And that's really the hardest part of these sorts of problems is that relationship, bringing that relationship to the problem but they all have a similar sort of structure or way to go about approaching them. So let's say there is a given rate. There's gonna be a given rate. There'll be a to find rate. So we're being asked to, to find some change or some increase or whatever it is. And then we need a link Oops, a link between those quantities, between the quantities. Okay? The link, that's the hard part because it's almost never present in the problem. We have to bring this to the problem. Some, usually it's some sort of geometric knowledge, um, very often like Pythagorean theorem. If we have some situation that involves a right triangle, very often Pythagorean theorem is going to work. Uh, if we're talking about, you know, some spherical balloon or something, then we might be looking at the volume or the surface area of a sphere. So it's usually some sort of geometric knowledge or... Um, force equals mass times acceleration, so that sort of uh, link between the quantities that we're looking for. Okay, but we usually have to bring that to the problem. And then, in addition to a given rate, there may also be some other variables that are needed. Like we saw earlier, we needed r as well as dr dt in order to give um, that change. So we may also be given some values in order to be able to solve a particular instance of 
of a, a problem. Okay, but they all have this general structure. And what I'll do is I'll look for my given rate, my to find rate, then I'll look for the link, the, the formula that links those two quantities. Then I'll differentiate differentiate that link. Of course, this is going to be with respect to t, with respect to time, since I'm looking for a rate. And then I'll plug and chug, you know, I'll plug in whatever the values or the rates are in order to solve whatever it is that I'm looking for. Okay, so that's sort of the general way to approach these sorts of problems. Look for the given rate, look for the rate that I'm trying to find, find the link between those two quantities, differentiate that with respect to t, and then plug in any values that I need in order to solve. Nice. So let's just try some examples. Okay, let's say we have um, a spherical balloon spherical balloon being inflated, okay. pumping in air, right? At, oh, let's say uh, three cubic centimeters per second. So we've got this spherical balloon being inflated at three cubic meters per second. Um, how fast is the radius changing when the radius is, mm, I don't know, uh, five centimeters? Okay, this is a typical sort of related rate question. Okay, so looking for a keyword, we're talking about a sphere. Okay, so we got the four thirds pi r cubed and four pi r squared, those sorts of formulas floating around in the background there, just because it's a sphere. And we've got, it's being inflated. So we're getting this air pumped in here at three cubic centimeters per second. So it looks like I'm given that rate. We've got three cubic centimeters per second. And I got to think, okay, I'm blowing this balloon up. I'm pumping air in. I've got units of cubic centimeters. So it looks like that's the change in the volume. Yeah, cubic centimeters per second. So this is dV dt, change in the volume. And now I'm looking for a to find rate. Well, let's see, it's asking how fast is the radius changing? And then it gives me some value of the radius. Okay, so radius is five centimeters. This is another given piece of data. Our radius is five centimeters. We'll, we'll hang that over there just in case we need it for later on. We may or may not. But it's asking how fast is the radius changing? So we're asked to find dr dt, the change in the radius. Good. So I've got my given rate, I've got my to find rate, so I need a link between the volume and the radius of a sphere. Well, this is where I bring that to. Volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So this is just a formula for the volume of a sphere. 
this links these two quantities, right? The volume and the radius. So uh, I'm off and running now. I'll take my derivative implicitly. So I'm gonna take the derivative of both sides with respect to t. So, okay, what is the derivative of the volume with respect to t? Well, that's the derivative of the volume with respect to t. I don't know yet. Oh, but wait, I do. We'll, we'll see that in a second. Now I'm gonna take the derivative of this in, in the normal fashion with respect to r. So I'll multiply the three over, the three over three will become one, and I've got four pi r subtract one squared. Okay, so there's the derivative with respect to r, but chain rule, I still need to multiply by dr dt. Nice. So let's take a look. Um, here's dv dt. That was a given. I know that one. 4 pi is just a constant. r squared, okay, I do need that. I was given the r. And dr dt, well, that's actually what I want to find. So I'm just solving now for this dr dt. We know that dv dt is 3, 4 pi, the radius was 5 squared times dr dt. Let's come over here. So dr dt is, divide over, that's 25 times 4, so 3 over 100 pi, which is approximately 3 over 100 pi, 0 0.0095 and now we got to think this is a change in the radius with respect to time radius is a length so this must be in centimeters per second centimeters per second so there we found the change in the radius when the radius is five centimeters three over 100 pi centimeters per second. Okay. <clears throat> Let's try one more here. Let's say we have um, a 12, a 12 foot ladder is leaning against a wall. Why are there always ladders leaning against a wall? I don't know. Well, this is trig, right? That should give you trig nightmares, but uh, this time we're actually gonna put things in motion, which is a little cooler. Okay, so we've got this 12 foot ladder leaning against a wall. And let's say that the top of the ladder, top of the ladder is falling at, uh, let's say three feet per second. Top of the ladder is falling at three feet per second. How fast is the bottom moving so the bottom of the ladder, right? How fast is the bottom of the ladder moving uh, when it's when it's mm, four feet from the wall. Okay. 12 foot ladder is leaning against the wall. Top of the ladder is falling. How fast is the bottom moving when 
when that bottom is four feet from the wall. Okay, so let's draw a picture. We've got this wall. We're assuming it's well built, I guess. <laughs> it's a 90 degree angle there. And we have this 12 foot ladder leaning against the wall. So this thing is 12 feet. All right, and the top of the ladder is falling at three feet per second. So the top of this is going down at three feet per second. Well, if the top of that is going down, it's staying constant. So that means that bottom needs to be going out this way, right? So let's see, how fast is the bottom moving? That's what it's asking us to find. How fast is that moving? when it's four feet from the wall okay so we'll have four feet away from the wall here so we want to know how fast is it changing all right so let's see our given rate well let's give some stuff some names um let's call this x and call that y wow creative so we've got dy dt, we've got the change in the height. I guess we could have called it h, and, but I just didn't want to get stuck on the bottom, whatever. We're given dy dt, we're given that the top is falling. We've got to be careful here. That's going down, right? So this is, it's actually a decreasing change, minus three feet per second. So we're given that that rate of change is down at three feet per second. Now our defined rate, see we're asked to find how fast that bottom is moving, right? Horizontal change. So we're asked to find dx dt. And now I need a link between x and y. Say, so, well, this is a right triangle, right? So Pythagorean theorem looks like it might be useful. x squared plus y squared is equal to 12 squared. Okay? So of course we could solve that over for y and all that, but y, we can just leave it implicit. Okay, so there I have this link between x and y. Say, okay, I'm going to take the derivative of this with respect to t. So I take the derivative of x squared with respect to x, just 2x, but I need to multiply, chain rule, by dx dt. And same deal, I'm going to take the derivative of y squared, but I'm going to take it with respect to y. So normal derivative, 2y. But then chain rule, I need to multiply by dy dt. And the derivative of constant is 0. Nice. So I was asked to find dx dt. So now I'm just on the road of solving for dx dt. It's right here. So I just have to move everything over and solve. We have 2x dx dt equal to negative 2y, oops, 2y dy dt. And uh, let me come up here. Dividing over, we have dx dt is... Well, 2 over 2 becomes 1, so we have negative y over x dy dt. Nice, so we've solved for dx dt now. Now I'm going to look at this equation and say, okay, they were asking me to actually find the value, right? So I need to evaluate this thing. So what is it that I know and don't know, and is there anything else I can find, or am I completely stuck? Well, dx dt is what we're looking for, so that's fine. Negative y, I don't think I know what y is. 
I do know what X is though. X is four feet. X is four feet, so we've got that much. The X DT. Right now I don't know why. We do know X is four. And do we know dy dt? Sure, dy dt was negative three. Okay, so it looks like I had x and I had dy dt, but I don't have uh, y yet. Well, I do actually. It's here, right? x squared, so four squared is 16 plus y squared is 144 so y square is square root of what was it 128 which is 2 times 64 sorry it's plus or minus really plus or minus right because i took the square root as part of solving a problem but i'm talking about the height, I'm talking about how high it is off the floor, so a negative value wouldn't make any sense. So I have a legit reason to throw the negative away. And then just simplifying, uh, 128 is what? Eight square roots of two. And if I believe two times 64, I can pull that eight out of the square root, so eight square roots of two. All right, good. So now I know what y is when x is 4, and that means I can plug in here. dx dt is negative 8 root 2, negative 3 over 4. So it looks like 6 root 2. something wrong here. No, I think that's, I, th I don't think that's, I think that's okay. Just double checking my algebra here. We did solve for dx dt. So that's fine. We got y over x. That looks okay. And we plug done. Good. Okay. Now what is six square roots of two? Six root two is about 8.4 And we got to think, let's see, this is going to be a change feet per second, just like the change in one feet per second. And sanity check, as the top went down, that change was negative. We were expecting that the bottom should be increasing in distance, so that change should have been positive. And I was sort of getting a little bit nervous over here with that negative and then having this negative here, but that actually worked out, right? The negative times negative became a positive value, and um, that's what we were expecting, so that, that's good. So there we go, there are dx dt. In feet per second when the bottom is four feet from the wall. Nice. Okay, I'm going to do a couple more examples, but I'm going to split them up. So I'll uh, stop for a second.